Failure is not failing down but refusing to get up. eVPN not only performs the task of numerous traditional VPN technologies but excels in each aspect when compared individually. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we'll discuss about eVPN VPWS. We will explore why it's essential and how it effectively addresses specific challenges. So let's jump right into it. So when we talk about VPWS, so VPWS helps the customer in extending LAN across the service provider network by enabling a point-to-point -point connection between two customers. VPWS has a lot of names. So the different vendors call this in different ways, like Nokia called it as ePipe, Ethernet VPWS, also it called as CPipe, Cisco called it as Atom, which stands for any transport over MPLS. Juniper layer 2 circuit, which is Martini and other is BGP based known as Compella, which is popularly known as BGP auto discovery. The use of eVPN mechanism for VPWS brings the benefit of eVPN to point to point services. These benefits include single active redundancy as well as all active redundancy. We can have load balancing. The beauty is we are able to do the multi-homing and secondly is what actually when using the single active eVPN is to signal who is the primary and who is the backup because in VPWS we do not follow the MAC address that really an important consideration. Here we can signal the MTU which helps to do MTU checks in both the sides. eVPN VPWS which define in RFC 8214 will start with the comparison between eVPN VPWS with the pseudo wire signaling. So eVPN services endpoint discovers and label signals are done concurrently using BGP. So the family is BGP eVPN. Whereas in VPWS, the sig label signaling is done via BGP L2 VPN and LDP. So BGP L2 VPN referred to as Compella and LDP as Martin. So VPWS using pseudo wires redundancy is limited to a single active mode. While with the eVPN VPWS implementation, it will have a single active and all active redundancy modes can be supported in this. So in the existing implementation with pseudo wire, the backup pseudo wires are not used to carry traffic. While with eVPN, the traffic can be load balanced among different P's multi-home to a single P. Upon link failure or node failure, eVPN can trigger a failover with the withdrawal of a single BGP route per EVI. Whereas in case of VPWS pseudo wire redundancy, the failover sequence requires the exchange of two control messages. The first one is to deactivate the group of primary pseudo wires. And the second one is to activate the group of backup pseudo wires associated with the access link. Lastly, we can say that eVPN can deploy data plane egress link protection mechanism, which is not available with VPWS. So the egress link protection mechanism is done by the primary P on the local attached circuit using a label advertisement in the per EVI AD per Ethernet AD per route. Let's discuss about few of the failure scenarios in case of eVPN VPWS. So eVPN VPWS uses an Ethernet AD route advertisement for a single home Ethernet segment. So therefore, upon a link failure of a given single home Ethernet segment, the PE withdraws the associated per EVI Ethernet AD route. But what happened when we are in a multi-homing scenario and there is a failure? In this case, it will do a mass withdrawal. For the fast convergence in the multi-home scenarios with either single active redundancy or all active redundancy, a mass withdrawal technique will be used. So the PE previously advertised the per ES Ethernet AS routes withdraw this route by signaling to the remote PE to switch all the VPWS services instance associated with multi-homed Ethernet segment to the backup PE. So as for the RFC, the Ethernet AD per EVI route must not be used for traffic forwarding by a remote P until it also receives the associated set of Ethernet AD per ES routes. With the introduction of eVPN VPWS, we need a new extended community. That community is referred to as layer 2 attribute extended community. So the VPWS 
supports in eVPN, which introduced a new extended community known as eVPN layer 2 attribute, which is an extended community and which is mandatory if it is a multi home enabled network. So with the route type 1, AD per EVI, an extended community layer 2 eVPN extended community will be attached in case of eVPN WPWS. What is the function of this? So the VPWS services on signaling through the route type 1 by two remote P's, these routes updates will tagged with an eVPN layer 2 extended community. This will help in order to negotiating the M2. This also helps in case of when we have a control flag. In general, for example, when we have all active multi-homing, all P's will set the P bit to 1. The primary P sets to 1 in case of active standby multi-homing. And the backup P will set the B bit as 1 in case of active standby multi-homing. And for example, if, if C bit is set, then the control word must be present in this case. In case of EVP and VPWS, the route type 1 is advertised. And the route type 1 advertised with this information of layer 2 VPN extended community, it will carry all the attributes with the control flag layer 2 MTU from a local P to the remote P. So we also can think about using an EVPN VPWS as a use case. We can implement that in a BNG when we are having a service provider domain where hosts do not want to connect to each other and it a kind of an uh, hub and spoke kind of topology where we are implementing. So EVP and VPWS plays a vital role in that case. In our next video, we'll discuss about how we will implement EVP and VPWS in Cisco IOS XR router. And we'll see that how the control plane behavior will be, what is the data plane behavior, which all routes are advertised. Thank you for watching this video.